Okay, welcome to Course 1, Unit 1, Lesson 4. What is a share? In this uh, lesson, we're going to learn about five different lesson objectives. The first lesson objective is, what is a share? The second objective is, what is shares outstanding? The third is comparing terminology between a whole business and ownership of just one share. The fourth is basic valuation techniques for one share. And the fifth is, why is stock investing so lucrative? So, without further ado, let's get the lesson started. Okay, so we have a scenario, and if you're just joining us with this lesson, uh, there's two other lessons before this, lesson two and lesson three, where we were talking about an owner named Nancy who had an ice cream stand, and we were really trying to understand how she values that business, that small business. And so in this lesson, what we're going to do is something a little bit different. We're still going to use Nancy and her ice cream stand to um, teach concept of breaking a company down into shares. So in the previous lessons, we Nancy was trying to sell her business for $200,000. So let's say she's having a hard time selling her business for $200,000, and now she's wanting to sell it for $100,000. So that ice cream stand that you see right there on the screen, she's trying to sell that business, that small business for $100,000. And she's really having a lot of problems doing that. And so maybe she's gonna break the company down into shares. Okay, so what is a share of stock? So as you can see, I took the, the picture of the ice cream stand, which was a whole business, which she was valuing at $100,000 and she was trying to sell it with no luck. And what she did is she divided this company up into what we're going to say is 10,000 pieces. So as you see the little squares there, those, those squares represent that she split that business up into 10,000 different pieces. And one piece of that business, which you can see the little square there, equals $10. And the, the way I came up with that valuation, there, that market price that, that Nancy uh, has, is we simply took the hundred thousand dollars she she decided to come the, to split the business up into ten thousand shares and therefore if you take a hundred thousand divided by ten thousand that's ten dollars per share the thing to really take away here is that term shares outstanding is the correct terminology whenever you'd be buying stocks when you see that that's how many pieces the company has been divided up into so you start with a whole business and you just Look at the shares outstanding, and that's how many pieces of that business it has been split up into. So if you looked at a company like Apple, they're probably close to a billion shares outstanding. And so that's how many pieces that that, that Apple is broken up into. Um, and if you own one share, well, then you own one billionth of the company. So let's compare the terminology between a whole business and one share. Um, as you learned in lesson two and three, and if you haven't seen those lessons, I would recommend that you go back and watch those so this is a little bit more uh, easy for you to understand. But we see the whole business there, and the market price, that terminology market price, is what Nancy's asking for the business. She wants $100,000 for the business. As we learned in lesson two about the income statement, those, those three documents there, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement are the three documents that uh, a business has that represents its value. And if you can read those three documents, then you can understand what it's worth. So on the income statement, the bottom line on the income statement, that, that physical document is the net income. And so we found out that for Nancy's business, her net income was $20,000 and that represents her profit. So in one year, she has made $20,000 on her business. The balance sheet represents the equity. So if Nancy would end her business, if she would kill her business today, fire her employee, and she would sell everything that she has and pay off all of her debts, what would be left is $7,000. And we determined that that's the equity. And we also talked about how the margin of safety is the difference between the equity and that market price. So let's say you'd buy this business for $100,000, and the next day you have to kill the business because it's not making any money. Well, the only thing you'd get out of the business is $7,000. So your margin of safety there is very little. Now, if the business continues to, to run and to be alive, you can expect to make $20,000 in a year. So that's the terminology there. And if you want a further explanation, like I said, go back to lesson two and three to, to really fully understand that. So when we look at the whole business, all those numbers pretty much make sense. And I'm skipping the cash flow statement because that's something that's taught later on in, in course two. 
Now, as we look at the one share of the business, which we've determined has been broken down into 10,000 pieces from that whole business that you see over there, let's take a look at how that terminology changes as we look at one share. Okay, so here we are, and you can see that we have one share. The total number of shares outstanding is 10,000. So we know our market price is $10 a share because we just took 100,000 divided by 10,000. The, the best way to really understand stock investing is to look at one share like it's a miniature business. Like, you know, this, this might sound crazy, but think of maybe like little miniature people working in that little miniature ice cream stand. And instead of it producing $100,000, it's only worth $10 because it's really small and tiny. Now that might be a silly way to look at it, but for some people that really makes things start making sense for them. So let's assume that this little small business, the market price on it is $10 a share. So the earnings for the business, which is the same thing as net income, okay, the, the, it's the exact same number, but the only difference is net income is when you're valuing the whole business and earnings is when you're only valuing one share. It's, it represents the exact same thing, but only for one share. So if you'd look there, if you take the $20,000 in net income and you would divide it by the 10,000 shares outstanding, you'd be left with $2. The EPS, that earnings, where you see where it says earnings and EPS, EPS stands for earnings per share. So for one share, the earnings is $2. Then for the balance sheet, we saw over there on the whole business, it was $7,000 for the equity. And so when you go to a per share basis, that isn't called equity anymore, it's called book value. Um, I don't know why they really changed the terminology, it's probably so you know that when a person says, well, the book value is $2, you know that they're talking per share opposed to the entire business. But what you're gonna find is, it doesn't matter if you're talking the whole business or you're talking one share, it's all proportional because everything's being divided, every single term is being divided by the shares outstanding, which is 10,000. So when we look at the book value for this one share, it's 70 cents. Let's go to the next slide here and see where this takes us. So when we're trying to get into the valuation of the business, we're gonna value this tiny share, this one share, the same exact way that we'd value the entire business as a whole. Now we learned different valuation techniques in lesson two and lesson three, and so I'm going to teach something a little bit new here, price to earnings ratio. And this is everyone's favorite term, um, and it's all often referred to as the PE of the business. So when you hear a person say PE, this is what they're talking about. And all you got to do, it's, it's fairly simple, all you got to do is take the market price, which is the P, as you can see here, the P divided by the E, the market price divided by the EPS, which we know is the earnings per share. Okay, so for Nancy's business, if we had one share, we know that the market price is $10, and we take that $10 divided by the EPS, which is the earnings, and that's the profit, that's the bottom line profit in one year, is $2, and you divide those numbers, and what you end up with is a ratio of five, and there's no units on that. When you divide a uh, dollar by a dollar, you're gonna have no units. So the ratio is a five and that would be your PE. So what does that mean, that five that we came up with? So what, so your, your PE is a five, but what does that mean? Why is that number important? So the best way I can describe the PE ratio is to remember this phrase, if you read this phrase. For every, then the star represents the, the PE ratio, you'll put that PE ratio in where the star is, okay? So for every five dollars I spend buying this stock, I should receive $1 in profit a year later. So that's a really powerful uh, sentence to remember. If, if that's something you, you're taking notes, I would definitely write that down because that sentence applies for any company. If you're talking about something on the, on the New York Stock Exchange right now, you can apply that sentence to the PE ratio. So let's say that the PE ratio is 10 for a company. So you'd say for every $10 I spend buying this stock, I should receive $1 in profit a year later. So as you can see, the higher that the PE ratio is, the worse that sentence sounds. Because if I said for every $100 I spend buying the stock, I should receive $1 in profit a year later. That doesn't sound nearly as good as for every $5 I spend buying the stock, I should receive $1 in profit a year later. So 
when you start talking PE ratios, you're obviously looking for something that's lower because that's a lot better than something that's higher. And all you're doing to figure that out is you're taking the current market price of what the company's trading for and you just divide it by the EPS. Okay, so when we look at the whole business versus one share, I want to show you how it doesn't matter if you're valuing the entire business or you're just valuing one share. When we look at the whole business, we know that the net income or the profit is $20,000 for the year and that the market price is $100,000. So if you had $100,000 to buy Nancy's business and you bought it and one year later you could expect to earn twenty thousand dollars on your net income so your return your expected return in one year would be twenty percent because twenty divided by a hundred is twenty percent now let's look at the numbers for the one share so when we're looking at that little micro business is how I, how I want you guys to look at it you'd see that the earnings and all I did was I took those numbers and I divided it by ten thousand because that was the number of shares outstanding so that will represent the value of one share. You can see that the earnings is $2 and that the market price is $10. So my expected return in one year is the same thing, it's 20%. So the point that I want you to take away from this slide is that regardless, a lot of people think that if they're buying one share that's different than if they were gonna buy the entire business. And that is just absolutely false. Every time you look at just one share, you need to look at it as if you were valuing the entire business like you're going to buy the entire thing. So if we're talking about Apple, if you buy one share of Apple, you might as well be buying the entire thing because all the numbers are proportional. So that's something that you absolutely have to understand. And whenever I see people trading stock, you know, these day traders and things like that, it, it's, it's kind of frustrating because... They really don't understand what's actually happening here and that they're they're buying a business. They're absolutely positively buying a business every time they buy one share. And that's something that is so fundamental to value investing and what this site really represents at Buffett's Books. So why is stock investing so lucrative? Okay, so the best way I can, uh, I can explain this to people is kind of give them an example. So we were just talking about Nancy's ice cream stand. So as you look at that ice cream stand and I asked you, would you buy this business for a million dollars? How would you answer that question? <laughs> Most likely you're gonna laugh and be like, absolutely not, that's, that's just crazy talk. So after we establish that, let's look at something else. Okay, would you buy this business for $2 trillion? This, is, this business represents GE, okay? And that's everything, if you could buy the entire business of General Electric, which is an enormous company, um, all throughout the country. They're, they're all over the world. Um, everyone's heard of General Electric and they probably have a washer and dryer that's down in their basement from General Electric. But would you buy that entire business for $2 trillion? Now, for a lot of people, that's going to be a lot harder question to answer because, you know, if it was $2 billion to $2 trillion, those numbers just really don't make sense to most people. It's, it's like asking a 10-year-old whether they know how much $10 million is, and they'd have no clue. They, they, it doesn't even make sense to them because that's not something that they're familiar with. Okay, so my point in, in showing you or asking you those, those two questions, what I did is I used a proportion. And when I asked you if you'd be willing to pay a million dollars for Nancy's ice cream stand, basically what I did is I took 10 times the current market price, which is somewhat of a believable price, and I took 10 times that to ask you a million dollars. And I did the exact same thing with General Electric. Right now, the, the current market price for if you wanted to buy every single share of General Electric would be about $204 billion. So the 10 times that would be around $2 trillion. So the question that I initially asked you with the ice cream stand was totally ridiculous. And the question that I asked you about the General Electric was equally ridiculous because it was the same amount over the actual price. And so I bring this up to highlight the difference that most people have, when, once you start getting past the million dollar or the $10 million mark, most people have no clue what the value of something is. They, they just, it doesn't even make sense to them. And so it, it further gets complicated when you take a large business like this and then you chop it up into millions and billions of shares and you're saying, oh, well, the company's $20 a share. That means nothing to people. They just, they just don't understand it. And so if you value one share of the business like you're gonna value the whole business, 
you're going to find that you're going to have much more success when you get involved in the stock market. So the thing that I really want you to understand here, this is if you look at the ice cream stand, this if a person was going to buy that ice cream stand, they're going to do the numbers, they're going to do the hard math and they're typically going to they're going to purchase something like that based off of numbers. But what you find in the stock market is you have a lot of people who don't know what they're doing. Now there are, uh, let me clarify, there's a lot of people who do know what they're doing in the stock market, but there's a lot of people who don't. And what they do is they trade on emotion opposed to the numbers because they, they never fully understand what's actually happening with the numbers and they have no idea what the value of a company that size actually is. So the thing that to really understand here, the reason that stocks are so lucrative is because there's a lot of people that are trading on emotion. They're saying, "Oh, well, you know, I have a uh, I have a General Electric washer down in my in my basement, and it's it's really good. I, I really like it. So I'm going to buy shares of that company, and that's their investment approach. Which is, you know, unfortunately, it's it's kind of scary that people think like that, and they think that they can be successful, and they might be paying ten times the value of the company." And they have no idea. They have absolutely no idea. So the, to answer the question, the reason that it's so lucrative is because there's so many traders out there that are moving these market prices, um, not day to day, but through the years. What you'll see is that some of these prices sometimes are offered to you to buy a company like General Electric at a really cheap price. If you go back into 2008 and 2009, some of the prices that you could buy companies for that literally had no debt were, were totally insane. It didn't even make sense how people could be trading them as low as they were. And now as, as we're looking at 2012 when I'm recording this video, uh, things are getting a little bit more expensive and prices are raising. So you're not going to be able to get as good of a deal on some of the companies. So your job is to always calculate the intrinsic value of the business regardless of how big it is and then compare that value to the price that it's trading for and hopefully you'll get a good deal. So that pretty much summarizes the lesson objectives that we wanted to accomplish through this lesson. And I just want to highlight that um, at the bottom of the lesson four uh, webpage, I have a practical exercise where I take people through a real company on the internet and show them all the terminology that we've been learning through the last four lessons. So if you want to know where you can find the book value number or you want to find where you can see what the earnings per share, the EPS is at. Um, just click on the link below on this lessons page and I have a practical exercise that I'm gonna take you through and just kind of show you where all these numbers are at. So it starts making, making sense for you. So the things that we learned in this lesson, we first figured out what is a share, then we learned what the term shares outstanding is, then we compared the terminology between a whole business and one share, we learned the basic valuation techniques for one share with the price to earnings ratio. And then we learned why stock investing is so lucrative. So that concludes this lesson and uh, be sure to check out the practical exercise if you want to see where some of the terminology is and we'll see you in the next lesson.